work on your heart. Go work on the ground where your wicked heart came from. Go work on your heart. Sin didn't originate in that beautiful garden. Sin didn't originate in church. You brought it. Showed up when you showed up. All the people in church ain't none of them ain't no good. It wasn't, it really worse when you showed up. Come on. Come Problems on. didn't develop in your marriage. You brought it. You got stuff you didn't deal with. You got problems you haven't dealt with. You have childhood issues you haven't dealt with, and you bring it to your marriage and blame somebody else. You blame God. God says, Adam, go back and work on it. Oh, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, kind and true. Seventeen, verse nine: The heart is deceitfully is deceitful. Sorry, Amen. Which means insidious above all things, and incurable, sick, desperately wicked. Jesus. Then he asks an important question: Who can figure it out? Mm. Here you see De Jeremiah dealing with the most important part of your human makeup, your inner man, your soul, your heart. He asks a question. Who has the solution? Who can figure it out? This heart you have will trick you. 
Amen. Make you fall in love with somebody that don't love you back. Amen. Make you fall in love with the wrong person. Amen. Or the wrong kind of person. Amen. Your heart will trick you. Yes, it will. And make you think you ain't got to do nothing about it. Amen. Your wicked heart. Amen. Your heart is a fraud. Desperately. Your heart is cap. Yeah. Your heart is bogus. Your heart is artificial. Give me something else. Your heart is full of trickery. Yeah. Your heart is a swindler. It's, it's, it's a liar. It's a scammer. And on top of all that, it's not just wicked. It's desperate. Desperate. Wicked. What does that even mean? What does it mean to be desperately wicked? How can you be desperately wicked? It, it didn't say it's desperately looking for wickedness. It is desperately yes. wicked. It tries so hard to be wicked. I need y'all to pray for me, please. Amen. Who wants a desperately wicked heart? Mm. Don't matter. You got one. Come on. We all got one. Come on. We all inherited from our ancestor. That's Adam. Come on. Come That's on. what we got. It is in the second week where we see God returning to work after the Sabbath rest. I know we focus on the first week of the creation and then our minds rest after the Lord rested, but since it doesn't say he returned to work, we think he only had one week of creation. Amen. But God creates Adam, and then Adam just lays there like a shell. Mm -hmm. God breathes into Adam. He breathes the breath of life, and now Adam is a living soul. When did the free will get inserted into Adam? Mm -hmm. That muscle in his chest cavity that mm -hmm. circulates his blood, mm -hmm. that, that, that thing in, in your, inside of your chest called your heart is free will. Your heart's desire is the fuel for your intention. You do what your heart come on, come makes on. you do. You do what your heart tells come you to do. Your free will is inside of your chest. Mm -hmm. In Genesis chapter 1, you see God taking his Sabbath rest after his, one, his first week of creation. I know they told you God created everything in one week. Uh -huh. Nope. God wanted to emphasize the importance of the commandment to rest. That's why you hear him saying on the seventh day he rested. But in chapter 2, God goes back to work. What does he do when he goes back to work? He plants a garden east of Eden. Remember that. He mm -hmm. plants a garden east of Eden. Mm -hmm. Adam had access to the entire world. Then God creates a garden, puts Adam in it, puts Adam in it to do some work. Take care of the garden. Amen. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. And yeah. the Lord God planted a garden eastward, yeah. watch this, in Eden. Mm -hmm. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So if he created a garden, and Adam was already created, Amen. where was Adam? All right. Watch this. Teach. Adam had to be somewhere else in order for God to take him and put him in the garden. Uh -huh. Y'all following me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Adam was taken out of his dwelling, yep. taken to a garden that Satan dwelled in. Okay? Satan right. was already in the garden. Teach. Teach. How did Satan get there? All right. When did Satan go to the garden? Adam was taken from Eden and then placed in the Garden of Eden. Okay? I need y'all to, to take notes, maybe. Satan was found in the Garden of Eden. He was already there. So God gave Adam permission to go into Satan's dwelling place. Was Satan allowed to come into Adam's dwelling place? Could Satan have come where God put Adam originally? When Adam was in his place. Mm -hmm. Are you in your right place? All right, Are you in the place the Lord placed you? Is there a place in your spirit that Satan isn't allowed? Mm -hmm. Before Adam had free will. Before he had free will. Mm -hmm. He was in a place that Satan wasn't. Because Satan was in the garden. And the challenge for our life is to give up our free will. The Bible says in, in Genesis 2, verse 9, it says, And out of the guard, I'm sorry, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I like to point out the garden in Eden instead of the garden of Eden. There was Eden, and God put a garden in Eden. Mm -hmm. It is here in the Garden of Eden where Adam can be challenged. Yeah. There he can be yeah. challenged. It is here where he can be met with the challenger. Mm -hmm. right. See that? Because that's what the challenger was. When you get to verse 15, the Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Was that work? That was work. That was work. Was that an assignment? Mm -hmm. Yes. Work is not a curse of sin. Man was always supposed to work. Work, work is good for you. That's right. right? Good for your mind.
your muscles. Good for your heart. Good for your psyche. Your psyche at work. Good for your brain. Good for the way you think. The Sabbath was created before the curse. The Sabbath was created before the law. The Sabbath was created before the commandments. The Sabbath was created because God wanted the entire day to spend with you. You see what he did? I had work in the garden. I got you this garden, work in this garden, but I'm coming to show up on the Sabbath to hang out with you. That's the day God hangs out with us. We see in God's infinite wisdom, he has a perfect irrigation system already in place. Adam really didn't have to do much, because if you have a garden, you know watering it is half the battle. That's the biggest struggle. The Bible says a river went out of Eden, out of Eden, to water the garden. Nice. Look how much of a provider God can be. Yeah. He got everything you need. It says, and from there it was parted and became into four heads. Mm -hmm. God watered the garden for him. Yes. The prophet Ezra recognizes the origin, the origin, the start, the beginning of the problem of the entire world today. In 2 Ezra 3, 21, for, it says, For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, so Adam had a wicked heart, he transgressed. What does transgression mean? Breaking the law. Right? Breaking the commandments. Transgression means breaking the commandments. But notice, it wasn't the transgression that caused the wicked heart. It was the wicked heart that led to the transgression. The Bible says Adam had a wicked heart and was overcome. It says, and that's the same way all that are born of Adam are, unless you're not a human. Human. Unless you're not a human, you are born with a desperately wicked heart. That explains why people are so mean. Mm -hmm. They have a wicked heart. Yeah, born with it. Yeah, that's, that's why. Somebody ever do something to you, and you couldn't understand how or why, how is it possible that you can do something? It's because they have a wicked heart. The reason why bad things happen to you is because the, the people that take up the space on the fruited plains of this earth, they have a wicked heart. That, 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 that's the reason. That's the reason for all evil. You know a simple solution to crime? Mm -hmm. A permanent fix to wars and murder. You know the way to get rid of liars and thieves? All you got to do is reach into their chest and pull out their source for sin. Mm. Just take it out. You take the engine out of a car, it won't go. You take the wood out of the fire, it won't burn. If you take the desperately wicked heart out of the human, when I studied criminology, I found out there's only two components to make up any crime. Every crime, there's two components. Desire and opportunity. You have to want to do it and have the opportunity to do it. Once those two things mesh, you do it. That's where crime comes from. Once you want to do something, all you need is the chance to do it. To stop all crime in the entire world, all you got to do is eliminate one of them. Mm -hmm. Opportunity or the desire. Yeah. You know why people backslide? That desire was still there. Mm -hmm. They never got rid of that desire. So as soon as the phone rings, see that? Mm -hmm. As soon as you're around people that drink, Somebody said, I ain't going to be no stripper. But as soon as you come out with a, with a OnlyFans, look at that. When you come to God, you got to surrender your heart, your will. What, what kind of person, let me tell you about some Holy Ghost field folks. What kind of person tells God, I don't want what I want. I want what you want. What kind of person is willing to live like that? What kind of person says, yes before you even know what God wants you to do. That's a surrendered person. That's what life is all about. That's what salvation is all about. It's about saying yes. Yes, yes, Lord. That's it. It's as simple as that. That's how you overcome free will. You just say yes. But who needs a heart? When a heart can cause so much calamity and so much pain, it's out of our heart that all of this, this evilness comes from. Who needs it? I need it. We all need it. I need it so I can remain faithful to my life. That's why I need a heart. I need it so I can love my kids unconditionally. I need it so I can love my niece. I need it so I can love my family. I need it so I can love my cousin. But how can the same desperately wicked heart that I have love at the same time? You see that? There's proof that there's a mechanism inside of your heart. There's proof that there's something somehow that remains in your heart that still produces the ability to love. It's still in there. But love who? Love what? 
God in his infinite wisdom creates a protection for your fragile heart. You know what that is? Your ribs. Your ribs protect your heart. Your ribs guards your heart. Your rib protects your heart. Your physical heart. Come on, teach, teach. Out of 206 bones in your body. See, when I look up stuff like this, people think I'm smart. Out of, you got 206 bones in your body. Out of all of these bones, God takes the one bone in your entire body that can regenerate itself. There's only one bone that can do that. Come on, and God knew that because he's awesome. Yes. I can't put the picture up here, but here's the source. You can go look it up. This is the source. You can view it by yourself so I won't get copyrighted. A couple years ago, these scientists regrew a man's jawbone using one of his ribs. Isn't that amazing? How? The red bone marrow needed to do this is mostly found where? In your ribs. If scientists can figure out how to recreate another body part, they can take your ribs and recreate a whole other person. If scientists can figure that out, mm -hmm. ribs can regrow themselves. Oh they have red bone marrow that can be used to create other bones in your body if you needed it. Oh. But the main reason God used a rib to form Eve was because it contains the best source out of your whole body for DNA. Mm. Most of your DNA is in your ribs. Who knew that? God. God didn't need a bone to create Eve. He wanted a duplication of Adam. Mm -hmm. he, needed, he needed a duplication of Adam's DNA. Mm -hmm. He wanted Adam's wife to not only be of his flesh, but to be of his soul. Because your DNA is your soul. That's how Eve became his soulmate. That's why you don't have time to waste with these oh, low-down, okay. good-for-nothing whosoever that you're dating that's trying to get your phone number. Come on, God dude. got a soulmate for you. That's good. You don't have time for that. Jeez, that's good to know. Go ahead. Did you know a rib can regenerate and replace itself, including the DNA, in a couple of months? Mm -hmm. Teach, Did you know teach, that? teach. That's why the Bible commands us real men. All right. And all the real men said hallelujah. Hallelujah. God... God commands us real men to leave his father and his mother yes. and cleave. See that word? His cleave wife. to yeah. his wife. Come singular. That's on. wife is singular. Yeah. Come on. S singular wife. The Bible says singular man and they, who's the they? Singular man and singular woman. Those two shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. If you add any other person, you no longer fit the system that God created. Right. You okay. have an alternative to becoming one flesh. Mm -hmm. After God separates the woman from the man, he tells you, go find her, mm -hmm. and they become one. Mm -hmm. See that? Our problem still remains with this desperately wicked heart. I can't get away from keep saying mm -hmm. desperately wicked heart. We can't just say wicked heart. It's a desperately yes, wicked right. heart. Right. God created Eve. Meanwhile, Adam had this desperately wicked heart. Mm -hmm. So that means she gets one too, mm -hmm. right? The Bible says in 2 Ezra 3.20, God didn't take away from them, both of them, a wicked heart. Why not? So that the law might be, bring forth fruit in them. What? So you're telling me God gave the first two humans on the earth a wicked heart on purpose? On. This, is, this is confusing Come to me. Because God said everything that he created was good. Everything he created was good. He created Adam with a good, desperately wicked heart? What? God stopped calling. Watch this. He stopped calling things good when Adam and Eve was together. It was the last time he called everything good as a whole. One flesh. One flesh, good. Two flesh, bad. See that? Eve was good when she was a part of Adam, not apart from Adam. Nowhere else does God call anything good. When Eve was separated from Adam, there's no more mention of God calling anything good. Nowhere else in Scripture did God call anything good because God expects you to be together as one. God is having a conversation with Adam after he found that joker hiding. <laughs> How you gonna hide in the garden that he created? After God, after Adam told God, "It's that woman you gave me." <laughs> after God, Adam said that, you don't hear nothing else from Adam after that. <laughs> Why didn't Adam repent? Why wasn't Adam's heart broken? Come on. Adam didn't repent. He never even said, I'm sorry. For those of you who think saying I'm sorry is repenting. It's two different things. Mm -hmm. Saying I'm sorry is one thing. Repenting is a different thing. Right. Right? Right. He gave, God, he gave God an excuse. Not only did he give God an excuse, he's so fiesty. He went right up in God's face and blamed him 
for giving him that woman. Hey, Adam, all God did was give you back your own rib. It's yours. That's all. It's you. That's you. When Adam begins to obey Eve, the moment Adam begins to obey Eve, which was supposed to be guarding his heart. Did you catch that? Yeah. I told you earlier, the rib is supposed to protect the heart. Yeah. Do you get it now? Mm -hmm. If That's Eve it. is his rib, her job, God gets mad, kicks him out. We know what happened. What I want to know is, would Eve have been tempted in Eden outside of the garden? Why was, who told her to go into the garden? Why are you having conversations I'm going to leave all of that alone. If anybody comes with anything that's against the word of God, get out of my face. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Here's what a wicked heart does. Mm -hmm. It causes you to live a life of negative consequences. Yes, yes, yes. That's where it comes from. All of your problems that you're complaining about, it comes from your own wicked heart. It makes you respond to God with excuses as if God ex accepts excuses. Show me in the Bible where God accepts excuses. A wicked heart takes away the ability to see your own flaws. Mm -hmm. A wicked heart makes you drink when you know it's destroying your family and your liver. A wicked heart makes you smoke and give your kids secondhand smoke. A wicked heart makes you cheat when, you, when you, you're breaking somebody's heart. A wicked heart makes a man walk out from his family. A wicked heart makes, you, makes God, makes you separate from God. In Genesis 3 it says, therefore, therefore means that's why. Okay? That's why God kicked him out of the garden. That's why. To till the ground from where he was taken. God said, go back to where you come from. Go work on your heart. Go work on the ground where your wicked heart came from. Go work on your heart. Sin didn't originate in that beautiful garden. Sin didn't originate in church. You brought it. Showed up when you showed up. All the people in church ain't none of them ain't no good. It wasn't, it really worse when you showed up. Come on. Come Problems on. didn't develop in your marriage. You brought it. Amen. You got stuff you didn't deal with. You got problems you haven't deal, dealt with. You have childhood issues you haven't dealt with, and you bring it to your marriage and blame somebody else. Thanks. You blame God. Thanks. God says, Adam, go back and work on it. Oh, yes. Real and come again. The word till come, means come, to come. work or serve the ground. That's his job now. Remember when the garden irrigated itself? God just right. took care of that. Now you got to do it. Look what happened. Look at the consequences that sin brings. All the fruits and trees were already grown. God already took care of that. Now you got to do it. Now you got to plant. Now you got to. Look where you end up. Look at you now. Look at your life. Look where sin has brought you. What do you think about sin now? I don't see anywhere. I, I can't find anywhere where Adam said, I'm sorry. I don't see anywhere where Adam had a single word after naming Eve and blaming God. That's it. I don't see any place where Eve asks for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. All I hear is excuses and blame. You, you ain't got nothing to say. Mm -hmm. Your excuses are lame anyway. My lovely daughter asked me a very good question. Love you, KK. She said, how come bad things happen to good people? Come on. That's a good question. You want to know the answer yeah. to that? I'm glad you want to know the answer to that. <laughs> you know why bad things happen to good people? Because I told you, all humans have what? A desperately, not just wicked heart. We have a desperately, we have a deceitful and desperately wicked heart. Mm -hmm. That's why you should never say to somebody, how could you? You got the same heart. You're capable of the same thing. All you need is the opportunity and, or the desire. You'll do the same thing. For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome. And so be all in case you think this doesn't include you, all they that were born of him. That's the heart that we all have. Thanks, Adam. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. Did Adam love God? Mm -hmm. did, did Adam love Eve? Mm -hmm. Did Eve love Adam? Yeah. Yeah. Did Eve love God? Mm -hmm. Those are four questions. And the answer to all those questions is no, mm -hmm. no, no, and no. Mm -hmm. If Adam loved Eve, what would he have done? If Eve loved Adam, what would she have done? More importantly, if Adam loved God, it would have been evident because he would have simply obeyed him. You know how we know 
You know how God knows you love him? We know that there's only one way to prove to God that we love him. What is that way? That's it. The only way to prove to God that you love him is by keeping his commandments. And if Adam didn't keep his commandments, does Adam love God? If Eve didn't obey her husband, does she love God? You know, all they had to do was just obey him. Look how simple that was. Just, just say no. No. Adam should have obeyed God. Eve should have obeyed Adam. Happy ever after. Problem solved. We wouldn't have been here. We wouldn't have the problems that we have now. It would have been over. The Bible says we all sinned and did just like our daddy. Adam. Why? Why did we all sin? Even after Adam sinned. Because we all had a what? A desperately wicked. Y'all got to put the desperate in there. We all had a desperately wicked heart. The prophet Ezra is asking, the prophet is asking, how come God didn't just get rid of this thing? Look how long. Look how many generations from Adam and, and the next child that any of us have was still have this same kind of heart. And you make How is that blood. possible? Ezra is asking, where did this heart come from? Mm -hmm. And the angel Uriel showed up. God sent him. And he asked him, do you really think you can understand God Almighty? Uriel said, okay, I'll tell you what. If you could tell me, I think he asked him four questions. But if you could tell me one out of the four questions, then I'll answer your question. I'll tell you where this where the heart came from. I'll show you exactly where it comes from if you can answer my question. So then he asked him, how much does fire weigh? Mm. Then he asked him to measure me the blast of the wind. Or better yet, call yesterday back. Mm. Ezra said the same thing I would have said. Same thing you would have said. I don't know. He said, then how can your vessel, how can your body comprehend the way of the most high God? Mm. Look how corrupt the world you live in is. You can't even understand the corruption is right in your face. So how are you going to understand how? Or why God does things. Mm -hmm. God has a master plan for your life. Yes. And you're trying to figure out God? Mm -hmm. Ezra is upset now. And he said, it would have been better if we never existed. What's the point of us living in wickedness? Mm -hmm. Suffer and not even know why and then die. What's the point? My God. And Ezra humbles himself after he humbles himself. Because when you're whining and you're complaining and you're emotional, God just says, okay, let me know when you're done. Mm -hmm. Because I can't talk to you now. When you're done... When you humble yourself, when you don't think you deserve an answer, then as the uh, angel Uriel decides to answer his question. He says, there was a grain of evil seed sown by God in the heart of Adam from the beginning. Mm -hmm. A grain. All this time, I thought it was the entire heart. No, a grain. Murder comes from a grain. Mm -hmm. Rape comes from just a grain. All manner of ungodliness comes from just a grain of evil. Then the angel Uriel told God, told him, God, the angel told him, the reason God did this, watch this, so that God could give the law unto the seed of Jacob and diligence unto the generation of Israel. You like that? What? It is here that we see and get an understanding of the concept of free will. If we had a perfect, uncorrupted heart, how would we ever have a choice? If we were robots, we would simply do what God tells us, and no problem, right? Mm -hmm. But God created us to love him, and love is a choice. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. Do you want to force your husband to say he loves you? No. Isn't it nice when your kids use their love language and draw you something? Mm -hmm. Isn't it nice? God wants, God wants the same kind of love, but if you force somebody to do it, that's not love. That's why God himself said, he said it himself, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes, keep it. If you love me, override your heart's desire and keep my commandments. If you love me, forget about the pressure of life, ignore the pain of walking this straight and narrow path. If you love me, you'll swim against the current. You'll accept being all alone. You won't care if you're ostracized. Come if on. you love me, I could put a tree or anything right Come in front on. of you. You won't touch it. If you love me. If, yes. if you love me. If, if it was me, and I'm sure you think like me, I would have built a 30-foot wall. I, I would have digged a moat and put flesh-eating piranhas in there. I, I would have put an electric fence all around this tree. Nobody would have seen that joker. I would have made sure then nobody 
would ever see that tree in order for us to never allow the power of my wicked heart to deceive me. Because mm -hmm. if I see the tree and the opportunity comes, I have a desire for it. Yes. God told you, Adam, your big dummy, that you would die. The wages of sin is still yes, death till yes, today. The yes. payment you get for sin is still death. You can't get away from that. The, this tree represented an option to prove that he loved God. Okay? The sin you committed most recently was a failed opportunity for you to prove to God that you loved him. If you sinned, you failed proving to God that you loved him. Hey, Adam, you want to please your pretty wife more than you want to please God? That tree in Genesis is the same tree in Revelation. In Genesis, Adam wasn't allowed to touch it. But when God comes back, he's going to feed us from it. It's amazing. What? He told us not to touch it. Why, why do you need to feed it? What? God placed angels with swain, flaming swords. Where do they get swords from? Why do you angels need swords? Why do you need flaming swords? He placed them at the entrance of the garden to keep people out of it. But Ezekiel prophesied that this same tree, whose leaves never fade, is going to have new fruit every month, and the leaves are for medicine. What? Why would we need medicine in the kingdom? Medicine for what? That's what this tree is for. It doesn't make sense. You see, God came to earth with the same heart. Y'all not going to like this. And then he goes to war in the garden. Mm -hmm. In the garden. Okay. Jesus wasn't fighting no demon. Okay. Demons are easy. You just cast them out. Tell them where to go. You want to see the pig over there? Go in the pig. That's how he dealt with demons. He wasn't battling a soldier. He wasn't battling any authority. He wasn't battling a warlock or a witch. He was battling his own heart. God Almighty came to earth and he was battling his own heart. The flesh of Adam is a monster. Mm -hmm. All of our flesh is a monster. It's wicked. It's hard. Free will is a monster. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. It's your own enemy. You see, you see, you see God doing what makes no sense. You came to earth to die, but then you're asking for the cup to be passed from you. You're the flesh of the Almighty God, and you're telling your disciples to take up swords and get ready to fight so that you don't die? It makes no sense. He ends up fighting with his own will by himself. Remember, the, his apostles went to sleep. Mm -hmm. They forgot about it. It's not that important. So they goes to sleep, and he ends up entangling and fighting his own flesh. He fights against the power of his heart until he breaks it. That's why you see sweats, the, the blood coming from his head, like big drops of sweat, mm. and he can't take it, and he's just fighting. That's how hard it is to fight your flesh. That's how hard it is to fight your free will. If God had to struggle with free will, what about you? It wasn't until he said, no, I don't want my will. Put your sword up, Peter. It's all right now. I surrender, not to these soldiers, not to Pilate. I surrender to the will of God. When Jesus was praying in the garden, when he went to pray in the garden, that's the only other time, stay with me, y'all, that's the only other time in the Bible where the word gardener is used. I checked. Except when God planted the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. The word gardener is not there. Mary went to look for Jesus' body, remember? Mm -hmm. She saw him, and what did she think he was? She thought he was a gardener. Mm -hmm. Why? We know what he wore, right? We know mm -hmm. what his clothes was, right? So it wasn't his uniform that would make her think he's a gardener. Why would she think God was a gardener? Mm -hmm. What behavior does a person have to exhibit for you to think they're a gardener? Jesus got, he just got up from the grave, right? Mm -hmm. What in the world is he doing acting like a gardener? What if, what if Jesus was planting that same tree? Mm -hmm. Then he can say, look, I didn't eat from that tree. Adam, see how easy it was? Mm -hmm. See how easy it was to obey? Okay. Ezekiel prophesied. Mm -hmm. Here's the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 11. He said, God mm -hmm. will give us a new heart and a new spirit mm -hmm. and get rid of that wicked heart that we currently have. That's good news. Listen to the very next verse. He declares why God will swap out your heart. He said so that they, they will walk in my statues and keep my ordinances and do them. And they, those people, the ones that keep his ordinances, those people that keep his statues, those people will, will be my people and I will be their God. So I want to know why can't we have that heart now? That's what Ezra was asking. That's a good question. Why can't I have the heart now? Why wait till later? If you're going to do it for us anyway, why wait? Isaiah prophesied the same exact thing in chapter 51. He said, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all of her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. The garden of Eden 
it's coming back. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It's a physical place. It's coming back. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel prophesied the same thing. Mm -hmm. I will take away your stubborn heart and give you a new heart mm -hmm. and a desire to be faithful. You will have only pure thoughts. Can you imagine that? I always, when I was growing up, I was wondering, how can I, how am I get to heaven and not sin? How am I get to heaven? God's going to take care of that for you. That's awesome. But when? And why can't we have that heart now? Why didn't we come equipped with the heart that we will eventually get anyway? Why give us a heart that could fail and call it good? Because if you choose not to have free will, if you make the decision, I don't want my will, and choose to obey, that's what's good. That's when it's good. Jeremiah's looking down a quarter of time. He looks at the current condition that we're in. He can see today. Jeremiah asks, is there no medicine? Is there no remedy in Gilead? Is there no doctor there? Of course there is. So why is not the health of my children, of my people recovered? Why are we today, 2023, in the same sinful state as if we didn't learn from all of the problems that sin brings. Why can't we figure this out? What made Judah sell out the Lord? That same desperately wicked heart that made Adam listen to his wife. What made Joseph's brother sell their own brother into slavery? It's the only video I can find for slavery, sorry. Mm -hmm. You know what did that? The same wicked heart that made Adam blame God for giving him that woman, same heart. What made David send messengers to bring another man's wife to him? That same wicked heart that made Eve eat from the forbidden fruit. Same heart. Mm -hmm. Same heart you got. You can't judge anybody else. You got the same heart. Mm -hmm. What made you steal? What made you lie? Wasn't the devil. What made you get drunk? What made you fornicate? It was the same wicked heart. Yeah. You got to break it or it will continue to desperately desire yeah. sin. It wants to break God's written laws. Yes. How much can you blame the devil? How much can you blame him? You don't want to break your heart. We know what David did. We know what he did. I'm not going to go over that. And we know how evil he was. But why does God say he's a man after God's own heart? What would it take for God, like he did David, to testify that you are a man or a woman after God's own heart? What would it take for God to say that about you? If Adam started out with a bad heart, how did David get a good one? Because David asked God to create in him a clean heart. Yeah. What's a clean heart? Did God put us in an impossible situation with an inevitable doom that we can't get out of? Is this a joke? The scriptures say, let your heart be perfect. How? I don't know where can we let out. How is that possible that I have a desperately wicked heart? Perfect doesn't mean no sin. Perfect means I know how to repent. I know how to get back to God. I know how to get down on my belly and say, God, take it out. Yes. Take out the desire. Take it away, Lord. Yes. I don't yes. want this no more. I don't want to displease you, God. The Bible Amen. says godly sorrow worketh repentance. Amen. Perfect is repentance. Perfect is repentance. Repentance requires you to break your heart. This wicked heart got to be broken. It has to be broken. God won't despise a broken heart. That's exactly what he needs to work with. Look at the problem Adam sent the world into, and he never repented. I, I, I want you to know, listen, the Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart. Mm -hmm. You got to break your own heart. You got to break that wicked heart so the Lord can be near to you. Pay attention, please. The scripture says, and he saves those that has a crushed spirit. Who does God save? Those that have a broken heart and a crushed spirit. How can you be so peaceful? How can you have so many things going on? When your soul is in trouble. All right. Our souls are in trouble. Yes. If you ever broke God's commandments, why didn't that break your heart? Why don't you want to get it straight with God? You think you got time, don't you? Mm -hmm. Psalm 51, 17 says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Yes. A broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, yes. thou will not despise. Yes. God is not going to despise that. And Jeremiah says, and I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their old heart. I'm telling you right now that God is going to give us this heart, but we got to break our heart in order to get that heart. Revelation 2.7 says, he that has an ear. That means everybody listen up. Let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Mm -hmm. To him that overcometh. How, overcome what? That wicked heart. Yes. That's the 
person I'm going to give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise, in the midst of the paradise of God. Those that overcome this broken heart. The only people that will eat from that tree are those that kept his commandments and have faith in him. Listen, y'all, serving God is worth it. Yes, it's going to be worth it. You might have to sacrifice something, but it's going to yes. be worth it. And today it's time to break your heart. They, they come you know how to break your heart? You tell it no. That's it. Simple. No, I'm not going to sin. No, I'm not going to disappoint my own God. All right, now. No, I'm not going to gamble with my soul. Amen. No, I'm not going to live this life. And ignore the permanent one after this. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Once your heart is broken, that's the remedy for God's healing that you need to end up with. Yes. That's how you get a better heart in the New Jerusalem. When yes. you break your tree of life was forbidden because it eliminates free will. There will be a time for that, but not now. Now you have to fight to prove you love God because without a choice, there's no way to prove that you love him. Amen. Use what you got. You came equipped with proclivities and things that you just want to do that you, that you don't want nobody to know about. You got secrets that you don't want nobody to know about, but you got to fight them. You got to fight these desires. You got to tell your heart, no, no. I want to get drunk this weekend. I want to get wasted. Tell your heart, no. no. That's how you break it. Break it so God can heal it. So break right. it so you'll be able to do what Adam wasn't able to do. So right. Break it so you'll end up in the literal garden. Amen. Once you prove to God that you love him, then he can love you back. Amen. Then he can give you this heart that you Amen. need. God is awesome. Once you prove to God, once you prove it to him, he can heal your wicked heart when you eat from this physical tree. Mm -hmm. This is a physical tree that you're going to eat from. 